guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annelise and today I will be reviewing the four new Zara Red Temptation fragrances. This is a new collection and they are all based around Zara's iconic Red Temptation. You probably already know that fragrance. And if you don't, it's uh, pretty much a dupe for Baccarat Rouge 540. Zara made this fragrance a couple of years ago and um, it's one of their most popular fragrances to this day. They already made some variations on it. So they made Red Temptation Summer, Red Temptation Winter, Red Temptation Elixir, I believe. And now they came out with four sort of collabs, let's say. So they made Red Temptation and then they added a certain note or like a group of notes to give it some, um, yeah, just like a new type of Red Temptation fragrance. Very interesting. I was super excited when I saw it, even though I was never really a huge fan of original Red Temptation. I don't know, like the combinations, like we have Red Temptation Bloom, Red Temptation Vanilla. I mean, I thought it was so, so interesting. I don't know. I was very curious about it. So now I ordered them and I tried them. And if you want to see my thoughts on these fragrances, then please keep on watching. But first, if you're like me and you love Zara fragrances, or you're just trying to get to know them a little bit better, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I already have a lot of Zara fragrance related videos on my channel. Feel free to browse around if there are some other fragrances that you want to know my thoughts on or you kind of want to know what they smell like. But so yeah, back to this collection. We have four new fragrances. They are called Red Temptation and Bloom, Red Temptation and Tobacco, Red Temptation and Sandalwood, and Red Temptation and Vanilla or Vanille technically. But um, yeah, that's a Vanilla Red Temptation. I think a lot of people are going to be very curious about that one. So these come in bottles of 50 ml of Extrait de Parfum. Now take that with a little bit of salt because I know it has to do with the concentrations of the oils and everything, but um, you know, I have eau de toilettes that perform better than so-called Extraits de Parfum. So um, I can already tell you that these four are pretty decent when it comes to their performance. I will go more in detail um, later in this video. But yeah, so they are technically extra de parfums and they retail for roughly 30 euros in Europe, roughly 46 US dollars and roughly 56 Canadian dollars. By the way, Zara released these four together with three other fragrances created by uh, master perfumer Jérôme Epinette. I will uh, review those fragrances as well. So if you subscribe, you will get a notification when I post that video. Um, but yeah, so that one is coming up as well. But for now, let's just start with the first one. I will be reviewing them in order of me having tested them. And the first one that I tried is Zara... Uh, actually, it's Red Zara Temptation. So it's not just Red Temptation, it's Red Zara Temptation. I don't know why they did that because that wasn't like that at first. But yeah, so the first one is Red Zara Temptation and Bloom. By the way, I don't know if these bottles are showing their beauty on screen, but I love them. I think they are super chic. Um, we have seen these bottles already in the um, Golden Decade Elixir, Red Temptation Elixir, and did we have another one? Well, this time it's the same type of bottle, but then in this gorgeous red, I mean, it's really pretty. And also you have to know that these come with a little bit of a dent. So I did not use all of this juice. This is how they are new in the box. Just so you know that it hasn't been used yet by anyone else or anything. They are all like that. So this one, Red Temptation and Bloom, has notes of orange blossom and pear, magnolia, sandalwood, and then infused with the iconic ambery moss signature. So that's what they mean with the Red Temptation DNA still being in here. And I gave this a spray and it's been a while since I tried Red Temptation. Like I said, if you follow my channel, you probably already know this, but I was never a huge fan of that one because, well, for one, I never really got the whole Baccarat Rouge 
540 hype. I think it's an okay fragrance. I'm just not really that in love with it as other people seem to be. But then Red Temptation, I gave that one a try as well. And even though it's a good dupe for Baccarat Rouge, I felt like Red Temptation had a note that was not working for me. It has something... This is just my opinion. I know it's a super popular fragrance, but for me, it had something dirty, almost earthy, that I just couldn't really... Like, I kept smelling it on me and it started to bother me after a while. And I realized that I was happy when I was able to take a shower in the evening just to get that dirtiness from Red Temptation off of me, which is not a good sign, obviously. So I decluttered my bottle a long time ago. Now, I gave this one a spray and um, instantly you do get the Red Temptation DNA. It is definitely still very present in this one. I got that dirty note that I was talking about. I still got it a little bit in here, but not as much as I got it in the original Red Temptation. Now the bloom part um, is mostly, I feel like this smells as if you were to layer Red Temptation with a designery white floral fragrance and pear. So if you know any white floral and pear fragrance, imagine that one layered on top of Red Temptation. I'm thinking Tease by Victoria's Secret. Here I am again. I know I use that fragrance quite a lot as a reference, but it's just a pear and white floral type of fragrance. Could also be Versace Dylan Purple, which is also a pear, but it's more of a shampoo-y type of pear fragrance. The original Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia has uh, gardenia probably and pear. So those types of fragrances, if you were to layer that with original Red Temptation, this is pretty much what you get. So I do get the white florals, I do get the pear, and I still very much get Red Temptation. Because it has those floral notes and that pear note, I do think this is, for me, a more um, approachable, let's say, Red Temptation. I feel like if you think Red Temptation is nice, but it's a little bit out of your comfort zone because you're used to designery white florals, I love them, by the way. I th That is my go-to type of fragrance is warm white florals with some vanilla in the base. I know it's not very unique or anything, but that's just a fragrance, the type of fragrances that I gravitate towards too. So for me, this is more pleasant. And if you're like that as well, I think you're gonna like this one as well. Um, like I said, still has a little bit of that, it's almost like dusty, like the dusty earthy note that I'm getting in Red Temptation and in Red Temptation Elixir. Still in here, but not nearly as much as the original. So if you're like me and you love those white florals or you like some pear with some florals and you want to give it a go with the Red Temptation DNA, give this one a try. Let me know how it works out for you. And by the way, the performance I found with this one was okay. It was decent. I would say moderate. I don't really think it's like extra strong. I mean, if you're gonna say that it's an extra de parfum, then I kind of expect like a really strong beast mode type of fragrance, but um, I wouldn't really say that this is that strong, but it is definitely a decent performing fragrance. I'm gonna rate this one a seven out of 10. I think it's a very nice fragrance. Most of the things that I'm smelling in here are very pleasant and easygoing and, and just um, crowd pleasing, let's say, but because it still has that one note that is not working for me and I don't even know what it is, but because it still has a little bit of that, um, it's a 7 out of 10 for me. So that was Red Zara Temptation and Bloom. The next fragrance I tried was Red Temptation and Tobacco. This one has notes of hot tobacco, fresh pink peppercorn and saffron also has, um, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but Jasmine Sambac. 
and Sister's Flower, which I don't even know what it is, but uh, those are the notes listed on the website. By the way, none of these um, at this point have been listed on Fragrantica. By the time I'm editing this video, if they have listed it on Fragrantica, I will put those screenshots up on the screen, but for now I don't have anything else than the notes given by Zara. But basically, um, I gave this a spray and you are getting hit with a blast of very sweet tobacco. So no surprise there, it's called tobacco and that is exactly what you're getting. Tobacco to me has always been a very sweet note. It's a very different type of sweetness than you'd get from, let's say, pear or praline or sugar notes or anything. I feel like tobacco is sort of a masculine and adult type of sweetness. That's just how I've always perceived tobacco to be. In this one, I feel like it's extra sweet. So it really is like a very feminine tobacco. Now I know tobacco fragrances obviously can be worn by anyone. I just feel like it's more often um, in like masculine marketed fragrances. I feel like this time they've made it a little bit sweeter just so it can be a little bit more just like so women can feel more comfortable wearing tobacco fragrances maybe. Of course I do think it's a unisex fragrance. It's just a little bit feminine leaning because it's so sweet. And I know the fragrances and the genders. I don't have to do the disclaimer every time. I know everybody can wear what they want. I really don't care, but that's just the way I perceive this fragrance. Now, I think this fragrance is very, very well done. I think it smells very niche. If you wear this and you're out somewhere and you, you, you know, you're with people and people smell you and they would ask, what is that fragrance? and you would tell them that it's a Zara fragrance, I think they would really be mind blown because it does not smell like a typical Zara fragrance at all. This smells like something from the niche fragrance store. <laughs> Even though it's pretty sweet, but uh, yeah, that tobacco, it's just very, um, I feel like it's sophisticated. I feel like it's very classy smelling. I, I'm imagining someone who has great taste in clothes, you know, who has a great, um, like a job in the city that's somewhat hip, let's say, like, like, yeah, like in fashion or maybe even in the fragrance industry, but someone who is not super mainstream. And that is what I think is very impressive in this fragrance. Now, don't get me wrong. I love typical mainstream type of fragrances. I don't have any problem with that at all. My collection uh, mostly consists of um, generic type of fragrances. So I'm not someone who's constantly looking for like the most unique type of fragrance. But this one is, in my opinion, quite unique and that makes it very interesting. But it's also very, I mean, you can have unique and interesting and that's, that's all cool but it has to smell great, right? We can't really forget the fact that fragrance just is, des is meant to smell great. And this one has both. So it's interesting, it's unique, it's niche smelling, and it's, it's a really, really nice fragrance. But you have to like a little bit of a sweet fragrance. So keep that in mind. But yeah, I'm highly impressed with this one. I am rating it an 8.5 out of 10. And I found the performance of this one to be better than the Bloom one. That one was okay. Like I said, I would consider it to be moderate project projecting. This one um, was rather strong. I did smell it on my arm for many hours. Every time I moved my arm to do something, I got a waft of this. And by the way, I know that I never say that a fragrance lasts eight hours or four hours or that's just because I feel like you can't really say that because it just depends on so many factors. You know, how often did you spray the fragrance? Where did you spray the fragrance? On skin, on clothes, 
on pulse points, what is the climate you're living in. I mean, those are all factors that uh, alter the longevity and the performance of a fragrance. So, but I can say that it's a strong performer. I do think it's very well made. Well done, Zara. Um, definitely one to check out. So that was Red Zara Temptation and Tobacco. The next fragrance I tried is Zara Red Zara Temptation. I always get that mixed up. So it's Red Zara Temptation and Sandalwood. The notes listed are Sandalwood, obviously, with spicy white pepper and saffron. Then some violet and iris, white sandalwood again, amber gray and irresistible tonka. Now I gave this one a spray and you can't deny that it again smells quite a lot like Santal 33. Now Zara has made several fragrances already that smell like the typical Santal 33 DNA. I mean, it's no surprise as it's such a popular fragrance. Um, they already duped it with one of the Jo Malone Vibrant Cities fragrances. That was a collection created by Jo Malone for Zara. And the one smelling like Santal 33 is energetically New York. I think it's been re-released now, so um, check it out on the website because they were gone, but now they've been re-released in different bottles and they did amp up the price a little bit as well. But I do think that is a great dupe for Santal 33. And then also they had Majestic Silver from the uh, Sensitive, Sensitive Metals collection. I also did a review on that one. I will put all those videos, by the way, in the description below if I'm um, referring to a video that I've made in the past. But yeah, that one also very uh, Santal 33-like. I mean, close enough to be called a dupe. Now, actually, we all think that Santal 33 is a sandalwood fragrance, which makes us think that whenever we get that type of, or we smell that type of DNA, that we are smelling sandalwood. Whereas, in fact, it's more of a cardamom fragrance, so it's very spicy. I mean, it has sandalwood, sure, but I think it has more cardamom in those types of fragrances. And this one, cardamom is not listed in the notes, but I kind of feel like that's a marketing thing because we're just programmed to think that that scent is sandalwood that we're smelling. If it makes sense what I'm saying, I hope you can still follow. But anyway, I think this is a spicy cardamom um, fragrance just like Santal 33 and the other two dupes that I already mentioned. But this is the first one that I actually really, really like. I liked the other ones as well. I've always found that to be a really good um, DNA. I know a lot of people are getting pickles um, or dill even, I think. I never got those things from the Santal 33 type of fragrances, but um, I always liked it, but it was just way too masculine for me, way too spicy and cardamom-y. Smells nice, but I would never wear it myself. Now this one is different because it's still combined with that Red Temptation DNA that is... I've always found that DNA to be difficult to explain, but I've always found it to be a little bit sweet as well. And I think those Red Temptation notes give this Santal 33 DNA, like the warmth I found it was missing. It's less dry, it's less masculine because of the other notes of Red Temptation. It just becomes more rounded in my opinion, more pleasant. Um, I'm actually really, really liking this one. For the first time, I'm loving a really strong cardamom fragrance. No, that's not true. There are other cardamom fragrances that I really like, but yeah, with that typical Santal 33 DNA, this is the first time that I'm really, really liking it. I'm highly, highly impressed, and I'm already gonna tell you that for me, this is a nine out of 10. Well done, Zara. Very, very pleasant. I also think this is very niche smelling. So like with the tobacco one, I think if you would wear this one and um, you would tell people that it's a Zara fragrance, 
they would probably be surprised because Zara still has the reputation of heavy, having, you know, very uh, cheap smelling, fruity, you know, generic fragrances. They, a lot of people still think that Zara fragrances in general don't last. I don't agree with that. There are definitely fragrances like that still, but I think Zara also has really great smelling fragrances that do last and this collection is definitely um, part of that category of Zara fragrances. So yeah, this one again, 9 out of 10. Also performance, pretty decent, pretty strong. It's not uh, the strongest that I've ever smelt from the Zara fragrances. I do think energetically New York, the first version, I never tried the re-release. Um, but that first version that was so strong, my husband wore it a few times and the scent trail that he left wherever he went was crazy. But this one is still a quite strong fragrance. Definitely no complaints there. Yeah, highly impressed with it. So that was Red Zara Temptation and Sandalwood. Now for the final one, we have Zara Red... Te no. <sighs> Red Zara Temptation and Vanille. Or just Red Temptation and Vanilla because they went French with this one even though the other ones are all in English, so I don't really know what the reason is for that. But yeah, so it's vanilla added to Red Temptation. And I know you've all been waiting for this one. Vanilla is just so popular in the fragrance community. So I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If you follow my channel and you watched some of my other fragrance uh, videos, you know that I don't hate vanilla by any means. Most of my fragrances in my collection have a vanilla note in the base and that is where I like it. I just, I'm not really a fan of super vanilla centered uh, gourmand fragrances. So fragrances like Keoli's Vanilla 28 or Spiritueuse Double Vanille by Guerlain, fragrances like that are just too vanilla heavy for me. I don't hate them, I just, I would never wear them myself. It's just not really my thing. Just so you know. Having said that, I gave this one a spray and this is a vanilla that I can get behind. It is, oh, I forgot to mention the notes. So the notes listed are um, a symphony of spices, saffron, cacao, vanilla, obviously, then some jasmine and vanilla orchid, and then again, vanilla and amber. So um, besides the vanilla, there's also cacao in here and you do really get that cacao. Now, by no means is this a chocolate fragrance. That is not what you have to imagine this fragrance to smell like. Um, I don't really like chocolate fragrances. I'm thinking Chocolate Greedy by Montal or Choco Musk by Al. I don't remember the brand, but it's nothing like that. Um, to me, those aren't really good, like chocolate fragrances. I know they're very popular, but I'm Belgian. We have the best chocolate in the world. So um, I'm not easily impressed with something that smells like chocolate. But anyway, this is not a chocolate fragrance. It's cacao and vanilla and then those spices and then a little bit of those florals. I can really, really get behind this fragrance just because it's not an overly sweet or a very gourmand type of vanilla fragrance. I feel like this is more of an adult, sophisticated, slightly even smoky type of vanilla. And it actually reminds me of two other fragrances. The first one that it reminds me of and by no means am I saying that this is a dupe for that, but it's just like that same category definitely. And that is YSL's Baby Cat, which I know is very popular. I just recently was able to finally smell it for the first time when I was in Paris. That one as well, I found to be a vanilla that I could get behind because it also has that sophistication, the unisex 
thing going on. I feel like it's um, it's not a masculine vanilla, but it's a vanilla that I can definitely imagine a man to wear as well. And that one also had some leathery notes, I believe, which gave it some smokiness as well. Not that there's any leathery note in here, but um, they both have that smoky, like a rough vanilla, let's say. Not too sweet, not childish, not cheap or anything, just a rough, sophisticated, rich vanilla. Now the second fragrance this reminded me of is another Zara fragrance, which is called Bohemian Oud. I don't think it's up on the website anymore, but they Re, they release and re-release and then discontinue and they re-release again that fragrance all the time so I'm guessing maybe in the fall time they could re-release it. Anyway, that was another cacao fragrance, also had some smokiness to it. Some people compared that fragrance to By the Fireplace by Maison Margiela. I don't think it's a dupe for that at all. It's just sort of that category because it combines the sweetness with some smokiness. But I don't, I think this one is more similar to Bohemian Oud than Bohemian Oud is similar to By the Fireplace. It's just a smoky cacao vanilla type of fragrance. Very nice, very pleasant. I do think this fragrance um, shines best in the winter time or maybe the late fall when it's dark out and cloudy and gray. And yeah, you're out and you can smell people burning wood in their houses for the fireplace and you just get that burnt wood smoke everywhere. Not that it's that smoky, like the fragrance is not like, it smells like smoke, but there's like that smokiness there that I really like. Yeah, with the cacao, that's the best way for me to describe it. I'm actually not getting a lot of red temptation in this fragrance. I'm sure it's there. I am getting it on the blotter strip though. By the way, I tried all of these on skin. I can't spray them today on my skin because I have plans and I don't wanna be smelling like a mishmash of a bunch of fragrances. So I gave these tester strips another spray just to remind me what they smelled like. But on the blotter strip, I am getting a little bit of the Red Temptation DNA, but I did not get that on my skin. Um, I'm sure it's there, but it's just really not that strong. So even if you're not a fan of Red Temptation, but you are intrigued by the cacao and the vanilla and the smokiness, definitely give it a try. The Red Temptation is very subtle if you can even pick it up at all. So for me, again, another really great fragrance. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that I am very impressed with this release. Thank you, Zara, because let's be honest, not all releases are well made. That's just my opinion. Sometimes I'm just like this, I'm sorry, it just smells cheap. And yes, it has a low price tag, but if it smells cheap, what's the point, you know? But this is another really, really high quality, well-made release, in my humble opinion. The last one, I'm gonna be rating an 8.5 again, but uh, like I said, if you love vanillas and cacaos, you might even rate this one higher, that is possible. But again, it shines in winter time. So, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of these fragrances and if you're gonna try them if you haven't tried them already. Are you as excited about them as I am? And also, if you found this video somewhat helpful, please give it a thumbs up. You would really support my channel by doing that and it's free and it's easy for you to do. So that would be highly appreciated. Again, feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more Zara content or Zara fragrance related content. I do some other fragrance uh, videos as well. So there are some of those up on my channel already as well. Feel free to check it out and uh, thank you so much again for watching and I will see you for the next one. Bye!